Welcome back everyone. Now that we understand how to handle errors and exceptions in Python with the try, accept, and finally blocks of code, let's move on to discussing unit testing. As you begin to expand to larger multi-file projects, or you begin to work with a team that's bigger than just yourself, it becomes really important to have tests in place. This way, as you or your teammates make changes or update your code, you can run your test files to make sure previous code still runs as expected. There are several testing tools, and we're going to focus on two. There's other ones mentioned in the notebook that goes along with this lecture, but we're gonna focus on PyLint, and this is a library that, in general, looks at your code and reports back possible issues. Maybe you have styling issues, or maybe you have some invalid code, and it will report back issues with your code. Then we have the unit test library. This is a built-in library in Python that's going to allow you to test your own programs and then check if you're getting the desired outputs. We're going to begin by showing you how to use PyLint to check your code for possible errors in styling. And if you're wondering what I mean by styling, Python has a set of style convention rules known as PEP8, and we'll show you those in the documentation. And then afterwards, we're going to explore how to test our code with the built-in unit test library. For this lecture, we're going to be creating .py scripts in Sublime because that's a more realistic example of how you'll actually be using these programs. You can still use the associated notebook for code, it has a bunch of write file magic Jupyter commands to create the .py scripts. So if you're really intent on sticking with Jupyter, the Jupyter notebook does work for this lecture. But in the actual filming of this, we're going to use the text editor because it's a little more realistic. OK, let's get started. OK, the first thing we need to do is install the PyLint library. So let's go ahead and do that at our command line. So if you're at your command line or your terminal, if you're on Mac OS or Linux, all you need to do is straight into your command line, don't call Python before this, is just say pip install pylint. Hit enter, so that's P-Y-L-I-N-T. Right now, I already have it ready to go because it came with my distribution of Anaconda. That may be the same case for you, but make sure you run this line just to check that you have it already. Once you have that ready to go, let's go back to our text editor. All right, so here I am at the text editor, and I'm going to create a very simple .py file. So let me say file, Save, and I'm going to save this to my desktop, and I will save this as simple1.py, which is a very simple file. You can save it wherever you want, as long as you're able to call it at the command line. If you're unfamiliar with how to actually run scripts like this, make sure you go back and visit the lecture at the beginning of the course called Running Python Code. Okay, so I will say a is equal to 1, and notice I have syntax highlighting. That means it's registered as a .py file. Then I will say b is equal to 2. Notice my lower cases here. Then I will say print a. And then I will say print. And I'm going to make a mistake here on purpose. I'm going to say print capital B. Even Sublime Text is telling me, hey, I think you mean lowercase, but we're going to ignore that for now. So it's just a very simple script, but there's definitely a mistake in it right here. So as you can imagine, with four lines, it's pretty easy to catch this mistake. But if you have a script of hundreds of lines, it's going to be much harder. So do control S or command S to save this. And once you have it saved, come to your command line. And then what we're going to do here is say pylint. So notice how I'm not saying Python. I will say pylint and then say simple1.py. Remember that you have to be at the same location as your .py script. And you can view the command line lecture to get an idea of how to move around at your command line. But let's hit enter here and see what happens. OK, so we actually get back a bit of a report here. And what PyLint does is it issues what is essentially an automated report grading your code. So if we scroll all the way back up here, it says, no config file found using default configuration. So you can set more advanced configurations. And we have final new line missing. So we have some issues, and these are styling issues. We have an invalid constant name. But most importantly, notice here, this is an actual error. So it has an E here. And these are the ones you really want to watch out for, an undefined variable b. So later on, it gives you statistics as far as whether you're using functions, method, classes. So if for some reason, you want to figure out, well, how many classes do I have? Uh, how many functions do I have in this code? And are they documented? Do they have a stylized name that's uh, inappropriate? For example, maybe you accidentally capitalized a function. So this would be giving you statistics on that. Then it gives us raw metrics such as how much code are there, how many doc strings are there, comments, how much is empty. So if you're working with other people and you demand, hey, every other line should have a comment on it, you could use this to quickly check. Now, whether or not you need that many comments is up to you. 
but hopefully you can see in more of a management position how these sort of reports would be really helpful either to give to your manager or to receive as a manager. Then we have duplication, so how many lines have been duplicated. Right now we have zero because it's such a simple file. Then we see messages by category, so if there's errors, warnings, so here we're actually getting an error. So notice it ran the code and it got an error, and then we have some more information about messages. And these are what kind of messages actually rise up when you run that pilot report. And here we're getting a bunch of messages. We have undefined variables. There's missing doc strings because it's just a simple file with a huge mistake in it. So global evaluation at the very end, it's going to evaluate your code. And here we're getting a horrible evaluation, which is negative 12.5 out of 10. So perfect score is 10 out of 10. And here we're doing absolutely horribly with negative 12.5. So Pilot, it's listing some styling issues. It would like to see an extra new line at the end. Modules and function definitions should have descriptive doc strings. A single characters are also a poor choice for variable names, so it's kind of complaining about that too. And more, most importantly, out of all of this, it found that error in the program. So let's try to clean this all up and see what kind of score we can get. And I should note here, it's uh, pretty difficult to try to aim for a perfect 10 out of 10. So don't be stressed if you're not getting a 10 out of 10 on your own code. Um, sometimes to get something 10 out of 10, it has to be very machine readable instead of human readable. And you always want to balance that if someone else views your code, they're going to be able to read it easily. However, we can definitely make some improvements here. So let's see what we can. Okay, so back of the script, let's see if we can improve this whole thing. Often when you're dealing with a .py script, you're going to want to have a multi-line comment at the top just so other developers can come in and understand what's going on. So here we're just going to say a very simple script. So that should help us score some points with pilot. And then we're actually going to create a function definition. So we'll say my func won't take any parameters. And again, we should give our functions a doc string. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here so we can see the whole picture. And here we're going to say a simple function. And then let's actually create two new variable names. First is equal to one and second is equal to two, because usually you don't want to use just a single letter as a variable name. And then we'll print out first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print out second here. And at the end of this, we're going to actually execute the my function. So we'll say my func, open close parentheses, execute at the bottom. So notice here that the indentation I'm going to save this and let's run this again in pilot and see if we were able to improve our score. Again, most likely we won't get a 10 out of 10, but we should see a big jump from negative 12. All right, I'm back here at my desktop. First, let's just make sure that our script actually runs. We'll call simple or Python, simple1.py. You should be able to tab autocomplete that. And we get back one and two, looks like it's running. Let's now check the score. We'll say pilot simple1.py, hit enter. And now we get back zero out of 10. So it looks like we still have some issues, but we're no longer getting negative 12.5 out of 10. All right, now you may be looking at this and saying that it looks like a lot of our problems are with mixed indentation. And if you scroll up here, you'll realize that it's telling you about all these warnings. It's found indentation with tabs instead of spaces. Due to styling issues, especially with different text editors, so let's say your colleague opens this up in PyCharm and you're opening it up in Sublime, someone else is opening it up in Atom, you typically, when you're working for other people, want to use uh, spaces instead of tabs. Now again, this is very much just a styling choice. The code will still run fine. As we just saw, they had no problem issuing that code, but Pilant is going to complain about this issue. And you can check the documentation and say, uh, don't worry about this uh, particular warning. Usually you do want to have it worn about mixed indentation, but you don't want to have it worn about pure tabs or pure spaces. So in order to fix this issue, you can go back to your script. Let's do that now. So here I am at my function, and you'll notice that when I was defining my function, all I did was hit enter, and then that basically auto-tabbed for me. So if I hit delete or backspace right now, it will go back one tab. So to fix that, what we can do is make sure everything is defined as spaces. So delete this right here, and then do one, two, three, four spaces. And if we do that for every line, I've actually already done that for you. Um, I've actually already done that myself on this script. We've done that for you in the Jupyter Notebook as well. But now you should be able to improve on that. So I'm going to save this. And if you ever have a doubt, 
are these tabs or spaces. In Sublime Text Editor, you should be able to highlight. And here, it probably won't show up on your screencast, but I, have, I can see four very faint dots indicating each space. And if you just have a tab, you won't see that. So you'll have to see that on your own screen. But again, it's just highlighting this. Then you can see the spaces. And if you have just Enter, you'll end up seeing a tab here, just one straight line. So PyLint will complain when you mix those together. So let's save this and go back to our command line. And now I'm going to rerun PyLint on my simple1.py script now that it only has white spaces. I'll hit Enter. And it looks like now we're getting much better. We're getting 8.33 um, over our previous run. And you may got uh, 6.67 after fixing that. Um, I've run this a few times, trying to deal with that white space issue. And this is most likely probably about as best as we're gonna get without having to put in a bunch of extra comments and code. Okay, that's really all we need to know about PyLint for our use cases. And in general, when you're just coding by yourself, you won't be using something like this that often. This is really more for when you're working with other people or you're working with really large programs and you have kind of strict methods for yourself to make sure everything is up to some sort of style convention. Again, it's not really useful for just a rating to come back to a single user because you just saw the entire bit of code. Okay, so that's PyLint. Coming up next, we're going to learn about unit test, which allows you to write your own test programs. Notice here that we're basically running a bunch of tests. It'd be nice if we could write our own. We'll see you at the next lecture.